We're back. It's time hey, to review. Long time no see, folks. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, YouTube. I'll let you in. This is another double episode that we recorded at the same time on Twitch, but we're breaking it up for you on YouTube. So we are going over episode uh, either 18 or 19, depending on which list you're looking. 18. Depends on which list you're looking at. We already argued about this, but it's called rewriting history. So that's the one we're talking about, which is the one that aired this week. If you're watching it when this came out, and we are now officially yeah. caught up once we do this. So uh, let me see. Uh, I was talking about. Uh, the intro you just had was me, but the previous one was William uh, Sheffelt, who was uh, Ninja Steel Red. And Matt Kendall Claire is commenting on that from last episode, saying, I remember seeing some of the interview with William. Don't recall if I finished it, but the Star Wars part was funny. Biro Babu said, good interview. One of my best, which, thank you. Uh, I enjoyed it. It was the first one I did outside. We're in front of, uh, like, a fountain and stuff. Uh, every other one I'd done yeah. inside. Um, but, like, again, many more to come. I, I don't remember the exact number. Five, maybe? Like, I got so many interviews at Ranger Stop. It was great. Um, and they were all fun. I'm a little bit of a tangent because we're going to review the episode, but I love doing interviews because I can ask almost the same exact questions and every person is so different, not just with mm -hmm. the way they answer, but some people like to joke around. Some people like to kind of get on a soapbox and give a speech. Some people want to hear what I have to say more than they want to talk themselves. Some people treat it like they're acting. Some people like, like you know, it, it, everybody's so different that like, yeah. I, I love it. I love it. Yeah, I, I will say, having only done one mm -hmm. interview so far, um, yeah, just as you were saying that, I was thinking like, oh, this person kind of does that. This person did that when you interviewed them. And yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely uh, something like you could tell a lot, especially as you were saying in your last interview about how they feel about the franchise. And not saying anybody has to feel a specific way, but you right. could definitely tell – who likes the community in a certain way or who likes just Power Rangers as a property or who likes acting or right. the martial arts aspect. Like you see kind of like a class in D&D &D where everybody kind yes. of does similar things. Yes. But one thing, it's like this person does this really well yeah so it's uh it's pretty cool yeah and i've and, and like i said i i it, more often than not i come away with more affection and respect for the people and by proxy their character which is a weird thing because it's I like know, it's kind of odd it shouldn't matter but it does it's like ah, you yeah you know what ninja steel red is pretty good now that i think about it <laughs> you know what i mean like what what i will say is yeah. from interviews that i've seen outside of this show and some inside uh i think it works where if you didn't love the character, you like them more upon rewatching because of the person. Yes. And the ones where you don't like the person, you still like the character. You just feel differently about it. Yeah. But you don't like either way. There's not like an inherent bad. It's like good it one only, way. It or, can only go up. It can only go up. Yeah. Or yeah. like at worst, stay stagnant. Well, that's, well, I'm saying it can only go up. It either stays the same or goes up. It doesn't go down. No, I'm going to disagree with you just for the sake of it. Just All right. Fair enough. So, so this episode initial, that we're talking about, go ahead. Rewrite it history initial take i can't hear you. your steel. connection hold on hold on big dog your connection is can garbage you can you hear me now now i can yes say it again okay nope you were cutting in and steel out take steel steel and devon steel and have Devin. never been better than in this episode um i don't strongly disagree but i don't know if i 100 percent agree Steel, I will convince Steel, you by the end of the episode. Steel is definitely this is Steel's best episode. Devin, this is a good episode. I don't know if it's his best, but it is good. I agree. That's what I'm saying. I don't strongly disagree. I'm just not sure. It's kind of like who's your favorite Power Ranger? What's your favorite movie? It's like, oh, well, I think it's this person. I think it's this movie, but I'd really have to sit down and think about it for real to be 100. percent But it. What do you think of this it, episode? Do you want to give it a letter rating off the top? Before we go into the details, I would give this a solid. B plus A minus. Wow. Okay. I would say I'm between B B plus. I, I think it's good, okay. but but there are parts that bring it down. Okay. Well, uh, we'll go over them. Okay. 
So it starts off uh, with Steel. He sees a human walking a dog, another human that has their pet cockatiel or whatever out. And he's like, hey, yeah. do a lot of humans have pets? Yeah, sure, lots. I have a cat and I've got a this. And I've, well, boy, I should maybe explore my human side and get a pet. And they're like, uh, is that a good idea? And, you know, yeah. and so then uh, Nate's like, well, I'll tell you what, if you could take care of a plant for a week, I'll let you get a puppy, which is like, you know, kind of a test. And Devin's like, hey, yeah. man, I'll take you to get a plant. Let's go. And he's like, OK, you have a comment here. Once again, steel being steel, mm -hmm. he is always genuine, which mm -hmm. is good, and he's so innocent that moments like this, you forget like how much he lo just likes positive things. Yeah. And Devin, without hesitation, went, I will go support you and yes. do something fun. Let's go. I agree. There's no ulterior motives. There's no distractions. I want to do this with you because I like you. Let's go. Perfect. I Keep have, going. I have no complaints with anything you just said. Uh, yep. We go back to evil zone of cyber death, and here comes Scrozzle with some Morphex to uh, – was it the power of Vargoyle's – I forget what he had. Machine. It. Was it the machine? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay, so here's the Morphex. So we find out what the plan was from the last episode where they attached something to the tower of the news station, which, again, I forgot to mention. He had this multi-tiered plan last episode, and it tied into the news station, which didn't have to, but it's nice that, like, oh, it was all but the news station, and he was right there, and they didn't even know it. So what did he put yeah. up there? We don't know yet, but he's fueling it up. I think he calls, uh, he calls it the memory pulsator, so we don't know what it does, mm -hmm. but we know that uh, it's going to do something about memory probably. And he activates it, and you see these white waves go across the whole city. And, and at first, you think, or at least I thought, that he's like going to make the citizens believe stuff like that rangers are evil or something. But he's like, no, it's going to get mm -hmm. everybody. Even in Grid Battle Force, you see the rangers getting hit. And he explains that they are going to remember Roxy and Blaze instead of turning into the evil avatars, that they are the normal Power Rangers. They became mm -hmm. the good guy Power Rangers. That is how history unfolded. Everyone will remember it this way as long as this device is functioning, and that will give them carte blanche to go and do whatever they need to do. And we see this image that is implanted in their head of Ravi and them in the suits. Now, if you're like me, and I suspect Big Dog, you saw this image like a month ago. Yup. Spoiler. Two, uh, possibly two months ago. I am upset. And not as upset as I thought I'd be. I'm upset Same. because it spoiled something so far out that was cool. But I thought it was going to be, hey, they became good again or something like that. Or, you know, it's an alternate timeline or like more than exactly. just a trick. So I'm yeah. bummed I saw it, but I'm glad it wasn't the like bigger plot point that I thought it would be. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Let me check. Uh, Matt Kendall Claire says, wow, Defender giving it a high grade? Question <laughs> mark. Higher than me even. I know. Uh, so then Zoe's in there with Nate and she was helping him with something, but then she's like, Oh, uh, sorry, Nate, I work in laundry. I don't know what I'm doing here. And he's like, yeah. And they're both kind of fuzzy, but clearly she's not a ranger and never even made it out of laundry, which is kind of a bummer. Cause you would think that even if she didn't make it out of laundry, she could still be like a lab assistant or something a little more, gla uh, more glamorous, even if she wasn't a ranger, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, so then we cut to Steel, who's looking at his plant, which he's named Spot, and he's explaining to the plant, look, I wanted a puppy, uh, but I have you, so I'll name you Spot, and you, you well, know. because that was a thing earlier. He said, I want a dog, and I'm going to name it Spot. Yeah. So that was, for some reason, a very specific thing that he had to do, so that's right. why it transferred to the plant. Fair enough. Uh, and so he's like, Dev and I, whatever, and then Devin's all like, eh, and he's like, what's going on with your face there, buddy? And uh, he's not affected, which I suspected when this started because oh, of his love special. love that aspect yes. of this. Uh, and so Evox is like, oh, what have you done? He's like, they all remember. Now we're going to go to phase three of my plan. Again, Vargo with the plan. Phases. Loving it. Smart and tough. Great. Yep. So now Steel is like, Devin. And he's – Steel is sort of simple and straightforward and, and true and loyal and everything. But he's not like the – deepest thinker but yeah. quickly he's like Devin what th something happened to you there was a flash your memory uh, don't we're friends and we're Power Rangers how do you not remember this you know and he's like smart enough to try to keep convincing him well and he also freaks out because he's like you're a robot he's like uh yeah dude like I I know I'm a robot right but, he, but but he gets over that quickly and then he's shocked that he's supposed yeah. to be a Power Ranger he, but I also love that Devin generally doesn't necessarily believe anything he's saying but then he's like hey how'd you like to play the video game at Grid Battle Force which is what got him there in the first episode he's like oh, you could yeah. do that I'll believe that <laughs> Like, it's so fine. So they go to Grid Battle Force, but then Steel's like, whoa, hold on. There's Blaze and Roxy. They're bad guys. And Devin's like, what do you mean? They're like, I see them there all the time, and they're hanging out with the good guys. And that's when Steel's like, oh, everybody's memories are affected, and, and there's some kind of trick here. I don't know what's going on, but we got to be careful. Yep. And One which, thing that I thought was a missed opportunity yes. was when they're all hanging out, because later it comes up 
will shortly it comes up about them having communicators yes. or like grid battle force versus things. I'm surprised Roxy didn't go, Oh, Zoe, why do you have that if you're just in laundry? Here, let me take that. And then she gets her morpher. That's a good point. Yeah. I, it's also one of those weird things where they changed all the memory, but in you like they were sloppy about it. They didn't go through and change every like things like that, which would have been yeah. like obvious. So you're right that that is a missed opportunity. Um, in chat, Real Babu says Data's cat on Next Generation was also named Spot. Correct. Uh, nice. I I I love Next Generation. I love Data, and I love Spot. Uh, Matt Kendall Claire says it's interesting how Steel wasn't hit by the memory thing, even though he got hypnotized by Scrozzle in the Halloween episode. That is a good point, and Real Babu agrees. Ooh. That is a good point, Matt. Well, maybe he was able to be hypnotized because of his human DNA, but defending. Okay. I think Hold on. Let me, give you, it, let me give you one shot here. Boom. I think they set it to a frequency that only affected like purely humans. That way the animals weren't affected. Obviously he's not affected because he's a robot. Why would they care if animals like were that. affected? I, I don't know. Just <laughs> <laughs> Also, so it wouldn't possibly affect them because we don't know the whole biology. But that's or... what I was thinking. They don't want the monsters yeah. being affected. So th- I, the monster, I agree. Or even them as avatars. And the hypnotic one was in that room, people that saw it. So it could be maybe yeah, more potent. It had to be direct vision. Yeah. So I, I'm okay with it. I think it's an interesting point, but it was different. So I'm okay with it. If it was the exact same thing, then that, that would be a bigger problem. Yeah. Um. So he says something's going on here. Then Ben and Betty, again, in kind of their original outfits, which we haven't seen them wear in a long time. You kind of forget that they were a little bit more official in the beginning. Uh, yeah. And they come in, they're like, hey, what do you have those communicators? What are you doing around here? You're trespassing. Give us those communicators. And they're like, no. And they try to grab it off steel. And he's like, arm, detach. Which at first I thought was dumb. But then it's like, well, no, he doesn't want to fight them. So the most humane thing to do is just let it go. But this is the part of the episode that I hate. Do you... The arm part, I didn't hate. The next part, I despise. Well, let's go through the arm part. It knocks them down, and it's kind of fighting with them. And it's doing silly, cartoony stuff. And it's kind of grabbing them, Ben, by the hair. Okay, a little unnecessary. I guess you could argue that Steel just is, like, having – keep him busy or whatever. And then yeah. uh, it, it's punching in the stomach of Betty or whatever. It's, like, again, like, more aggressive. Like, I thought the whole part was, like, to not fight them, but then he's kind of fighting them. Uh, all of this wasn't great. And then it's – Spanks Ben. The hand yeah, literally I, spanks him. That's weird. That's weird for a lot of reasons. I don't like yeah, it. I don't I like it. I think it's supposed to be funny, but it made me feel uncomfortable. It, yeah, it, it, I agree. I did not like it. Um, Real Babu says uh, Ninja Steel for Matt. Yep, fair enough. Uh, and Matt Kendall Claire says uh, they're making fun of each other's typing. Uh, the arm part was funny, but the spanking was a bit too much. So we're all in agreed with that, that it was kind of okay. And then, yeah, it's just. I don't – it's just weird. I don't know how else to put it. It was a weird choice. I think if they did it once and moved on, it would be so quick that, like, we could try to feel if indifferent it was, about if it. If it was a foot and it kicked him in the butt, it wouldn't have bothered me. There's something about it being literally like I'm spanking you like a bad boy or whatever. Like, it's just – it's weird. It's weird. Yeah, I don't it, like it. It started to muddy the lines. Yeah. So that that scene brought this down a whole half grade. Like, like I'm between a B and a B plus. I would have been between a B plus and an A minus if it wasn't for that scene. But I that cannot stress how much I did not like that part. It really bothered me. Like to the, the point where I was. The next Ben and Betty scene bothered me more. I'm in disagreement. I like the next Ben and Betty scene. Oh no. Oh, okay. Well, we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay. We haven't argued in a while. I guess there's no been <laughs> like the present. Uh, so Vargoyle shows up uh, to confront Steel and Devin, and he's like, "Oh, Steel, you figured it out. I guess you're not as dumb, or because he's like, I'm part robot and whatever." And he's like, "Okay, Devin." You and me are Power Rangers, but we got to – I'll fight him or – what does he say here? I don't remember. <laughs> I'll handle this. Like you take care of Spot. Oh, you spot take care of Spot. Spot. Exactly. Thinking about Spot. So he goes to fight Vargoyle, and he's getting his butt kicked because even when he was morphed, he had yeah, a Yeah, not even a little bit. Like a lot. Bigger. Yeah. like, And he kind of knew he was no match, but it doesn't matter because he's got to fight yeah. him. And Devin – and then great moment for Devin. Unmorphed, not even sure he's a Power Ranger knows he he's way outmatched when this robot's getting beat up. He picks up a pipe and smacks Vargoyle. Great moment. I, I agree. Maybe one of his best. That's all you have to say? You just wanted, okay. I'm say. So here's the thing, and you've made a great point about this. <clears throat> yeah. The root of this episode is bringing everybody back to episode one vibes. Mm-hmm. And with that, they're taking away all the stuff that's happened so far and bringing us back to our first impressions of these characters. In some ways, we've seen how they've grown with Zoe. In other ways, we've seen how far they've fallen with Devin. This Devin is the Devin we loved at the beginning of the season. We had high hopes. He didn't 
overthink anything. He's excited he about video like games. Power, jumps into fight. His head, yeah. Loves video games. Super friendly. It, to be fair, his friendliness was before. Yes, I was going to say. Fine. But right here, he jumps in trying to save him. Doesn't even know he has powers. Yes. 100% hero. Agreed. Does I, all this. and <sighs> Most heroic thing he's done the entire show. By yeah. far. Yeah, I agree. And he's still protecting the plant. <laughs> I know. That's the other part, too, is they always are looking out for spot. But yeah, I, so yeah. Th- this scene I really enjoyed. I agree. Not the best choreographed fight in the world, no, but from a character story standpoint, it's fun. And they're both, you know, even though Steel's a robot, it's a civilian, two civilians versus a superpowered villain. And they're kind of holding their own, even though you know they're not going to win, but they're just the fact that they could be there fighting at all is pretty impressive. Uh, yeah. And they're trying to protect Spot. And again, I've said this before, but it had a very goofy, ziggy RPM, Jackie Chan kind of feel to it. Yep. Where they're, not, they're like, whoops, what's going on? Here's the plant. Derp, derp, derp. You know, like, again, not super well choreographed, but it was fun. Uh, and yeah. then the plant gets knocked up, and it's like, oh, no, Spot's going to die. And Devin instinctively runs, and even though he doesn't have – and I like this because he didn't lose his powers. He lost his memory of the power. So he runs with yep. the cheetah speed, catches Spot, uh, but then it doesn't matter because Vargoyle destroys it with a gun. The gun killed it, of course, which is such a bummer. And Steel's like, no. This is the child equivalent of John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> yes they take out spot and it's like you know what that's it your days are numbered Vargoyle. uh let me check out chat real quick um matt can clear uh, blah, blah, blah. uh got a gas and defender to argue at some point lol well it'll happen uh real bad boost says i know hey big dog operation overdrive is the best well, he would agree with that. So what's the argument? Okay, Matt Kendall Clear. I found it funny how Vargo is stupid enough to slip where his memory device is at. Villains don't ever think. True. Um, so, but the reason Devin's not here is because once he realized he had super speed, he's like, I am a Power Ranger. And Steel's like, go get our communicator morpher so we could morph. And yep. that's when he's gone. That's when Spot gets killed. And then we see Devin quick grab him from Ben and Betty. And he comes back. He's like, here we go. And then Steel's like, okay, I'm going to teach you about being a Power Ranger, which we don't see. But he's like, it's implied something happens off screen. Yeah. Uh, and so now we cut back to group battle force. We see blaze and Roxy looking smarmy. They're fitting in, but you know, they got something planned and we got the rest of the team behind them, including Zoe with laundry, which is just kind of like uh, co- lucky that she happens to be slap there. in the face kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and they're like, Oh, we got to take care of something. And they, they ditch the rest of the team and, Z- um, not, I said Zoe, Roxy, Roxy goes into where Zoe is and is like, Hey Love. sister, I got a little something for you. Now here's the question I have. She plugs something in. And we don't know what it's going to do. We know it's bad. Why didn't Blaze put one in for his I thought the same thing. Oh, okay. Here is my speculation. Okay. I think what it is, is it's something that will make it where she can fuse with the body and control it so she's not an avatar anymore and is physical. Okay. She would still have the abilities to transport in between the cyber dimension of evil and the regular place, or the real world, but it'll improve something somewhere and she could try to dupe ravi again because she'll have okay. woken up well, well fair enough but why wouldn't blaze do the same thing because nobody liked blaze when he was not an avatar anyway because there's a huge jerk and it's just really convenient that he was okay. not like around anymore so if we go with that storyline i could see a thing where the two personalities of her kind of fuse and that when she's saved and woken up, there's a bit of or, Roxy, evil Roxy still in her. Well, I was going to say, yeah, or they just fight for kind of dominance, check on hide stuff. I could see that, but I, I kind of would like it if it's like, well, this was always in you. She's like the dark side of you. And so you reabsorb her and it, you're, you become one full person. Season uh, six-ish Supernatural, Sam, picking up what I'm putting down. Something uh, like that? Yeah. Okay. Something like you're, that. Do you remember what I'm talking kind about? Kind of, but I don't want to get into Supernatural no, stuff. No, I know. That's why I was being very yeah. critical. Well, uh, it's, Supernatural it's happened, it's a great show. It's hap- Actually, I got a Supernatural cat shirt on today. I just realized. <laughs> <laughs> this is Sam and Dean and Castiel. Uh, that's coincidental. Um, let's see chat real quick. Uh, Matt Canaclair, I find it. Oh, no. uh, Kyle Goldfinch. Gazbot, you're talking about my favorite episode. I am? The one we're watching? Boom! Excellent. Awesome. Uh, Aki Dragu says Vargoyle is steel is like steel. He has overconfidence. That's true, but but Vargoyle is more powerful than steel, like physically. So it's somewhat warranted. But with the plan, I, I guess you're right. Uh, Kyle Goldfinch, here's my question: Why didn't Roxy and Blaze wear red and yellow clothes because they are Rangers? Probably underneath is what we can assume. You mean the avatars, or do you mean 
the because yeah. because the the original people you can see she does have yellow but the avatars yeah. when the avatars were first created they did have those colors yep and then they changed and i think they do I they do have yellow and red don't they I think what Kyle's yeah. saying is when they're in the jumpsuits walking around, oh. why they're not color coded like everybody else. I guess because normally they're color coded to their evil avatar personas, and they just wanted to make them fit in. And really, they probably didn't want to make a new outfit like behind yeah. the scenes. But a uh, bunch more chat I missed. Um, the real Babu, because it was Roxy's idea. Blaze had a different plan. He wants his to be better. That's a good point too, because they're always competitive. But That's it does seem fair. like he's kind of helping her. Like as much as they don't yeah. like each other, it seems like they kind of are working together because they don't like Vargoyle and Scrozzle more. You know. Yeah. Uh, but that that is true. They do like to have their own plans. Kyle Goldfinch, do you think that in season two, Blaze and Roxy will become Rangers? I doubt it. Um, I would if like it. If they become Rangers over Ben and Betty, I will be he, furious. Here's what I would like if they were the red and yellow like alternates. Like they they like if if they needed extra help or the others were incapacitated. Like Ninja they, Storm was. Ninja like Storm. Color shifted. Ninja Steel, you mean? No, Ninja Storm. I've seen Ninja Storm, but I don't remember what you're talking about. No, like how they had Navy in like. No, no, I mean like Ninja Steel, where they split the red power between three people at some oh, point. Oh, so I like see they're not mean. their own ranger. It's sort of like, hey, you know, you're trained, you're qualified, you're good guys now. You can use some of my power because we need somebody to be in one place or another. Or Devin gets hurt, so Blaze takes over. That kind of thing, where they you know, don't become be cool. new rangers, but they share the power. That's what I would like to see. What's it up? would be really cool if they were able to do that, but they have to use fury crystals and then they're tempted because in the back of their head, they mm -hmm. still have the evil avatar personas, but now they're alive and they're not bringing back fury crystals. I don't want to see fury crystals anymore. We dug I that. Know. I it's such a terrible MacGuffin. <sighs> um, Chad again, uh, Aki drag. Oh, Castiel. Yeah. I love Castiel. Cat, cat. Steel. Oh, cat steel. I didn't even get that. Well yeah. job. Ninja steel point for Aki Dragu. Uh, Matt can uh, saying hi to everybody. Kyle Goldfinch. No, when they're brainwashed. Oh, the last episode. Okay, yeah. Wait, what? This is the one where they're brainwashed. What's happening? I don't know what's happening. <laughs> this is the I'm episode confused. where they're brainwashed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to clear. That's a nice idea, guys. Thank you. Uh, so these guys... Uh, well, let me go back to the Oh, conch. oh, 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 oh. I think what he's saying is why didn't they morph? Because they had the memories implanted, but they didn't have the like good ranger morphers they still had their avatar morphers so that's why they couldn't morph into red and yellow is what oh, i think Kyle goldfinch is asking that makes sense yeah they're because yeah because they've only changed their memories not their physical bodies or powers or whatever um yep. but nate and everybody else is taking commands from those two presumably because if blaze is red he's like the leader and they're like get yeah. all these transport crystals over here or whatever so like okay let's do it ben and betty are moving on now i'll agree with you here they crack it which is standard Ben and Betty stuff. It looks pretty serious, and they're like, oh, man, that's bad. Standard Ben and Betty stuff. The part I don't like where it's like, it's probably fine. That I don't like because they would, they are responsible enough, and maybe it's because they've been reset. They haven't learned their lesson. Then when they make mistakes, they're usually like, we better fix this or tell someone. They are responsible for their mistakes. So in this case, they're responsible. But the energy spills out, and this is some sort of teleportation device, and they get sucked into it. And then they appear in a volcano, maybe at the, the evil palace of evil dimension that didn't bother me i thought that was hilarious then That's fine. they're falling through the air also funny also because fine. then they're in space and there's hated no it. there's no sound because there's no sound it, in space that's fine but i that, hated it why there's no reason that should have worked why why is that why is that weirder than when they're flying through the air in a volcano what makes that weirder because they would die in space, let's be real. No, you would die after a minute or two, but there, it seems like they're only there for a second or two. You don't die no, instantly. I, I'm not a scientist, and if anybody has actual scientific information here, please I've, provide I've watched it. enough. They would, their heads would explode. No, no, that's not pressure. true. That's not true. That's just science fantasy. That is not true. They that, wouldn't be no, able to do this. No, they can. They couldn't be out there for – you would freeze – actually, did you see Guardians of the Galaxy? Yes. When he goes – that's probably more realistic than most we see, where you start freezing and you're – capillaries burst and you do start dying but you don't explode it's not an instantaneous thing you can survive for a short period of time if they were only there for 30 seconds or a minute they would be okay it would be unpleasant and i take it as it's just happening super super quick because we just saw them go three places at once they try to scream there's no air that's accurate i have no problem with that i have no problem with that and i thought this is one of the best gags they've been if we're gonna go cartoony hey we're teleporting all over it's that's funny fine. it's funny the space one is what bothered me specifically, Adam. Well, I think I've successfully proven why it shouldn't. 
I don't think you did. We'll agree to disagree. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, Kyle Goldfinch says, yeah, when they are brainwashed, I'm asking why you think they don't wear red clothes and yellow clothes because technically they are rangers. Uh, but, Gaz, I think you answered my question. Uh, okay, gotcha. Uh, Aki Draghi, vacuum was there only for a second, so there's no instant death in space. I told you. Kyle Goldfinch, I love how uh, uh, arguing about the scientific accuracy of Shirley Power Rangers. True. And and in other seasons, they have Words people... have no meaning on a planet under the Cape of War. <laughs> and to be fair, if you want to go with Power Rangers... Mighty Morphin in space. We've seen many seasons where people are on the moon and could breathe and talk or in space and could breathe and talk. So if we're in that universe, then space is fine. If I we're... know why they didn't wear red and yellow. Why? Because if they've learned one thing from the Masked Rider, it's that their garments betray them. All right. Guess what? We are now oh. officially behind. So let's I know. Move on. Let's go. All right. So we see the device and it's it's pumping out all the energy waves. And Devin and Nate find it, and uh, I'm sorry, Devin and Steel find it, and Steel's like, I'm gonna blast that, but it's ray shielded. So Devin's like, yeah, I'm gonna work. climb up. What? Uh, no, keep going. Oh, so Devin's like, I'm gonna climb up. It's electricity. So they they did the two things. They tried to shoot it, which makes sense. Then they tried to climb, makes sense. Didn't work. So then Steel, and this is Steel's hero moment, is like, I'm gonna climb it, and he's like, want you to be destroyed. He's like, I'm part robot. I'll probably be okay. And he's like. Oh god! And he's getting like electrocuted as he goes up, and he's fighting through it. Total hero moment. I agree. They yep. both have good hero moments. So good. This is very good. And very moving. Uh, meanwhile, Devin comes back in, and Vargoyle appears. And then, I just love the shot of Devin and the pr- the uh, producer, whoever he is, the station manager, like, Arr! because there is Vargoyle, and he's like, ah, you don't even know you're the Red Ranger, but I'm gonna kill you. And he's like, oh yeah, well, Steel told me how to do this, and he does the morph. Which, if they didn't have the scene where Steel said, I'm gonna teach you something. This would bother me because I'd be like, "How does he know?" But they did it, and I don't get why every other time we bring up throwaway lines, they miss them. I know because this it makes that they know. It makes all the difference in the world. This no. is good. Uh, <laughs> it, it get, I feel so conflicted when they do things so well in episodes that we bring up them doing wrong in previous. Where I'm like, <sighs> "Oh, why didn't you know?" It's, sooner? Yeah, you know it. Sometimes uh, we're missing some chat here. Let's see. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Matt Kendall Claire thinks I get a Ninja Steel point for the space. I agree. Ninja Steel. Uh, <laughs> and Power Rangers need to invent space. Oh, I'm sorry. Real Babu says, uh, and I could breathe on the moon. Right. That's what I was saying. Monster, you breathe on the moon. Doesn't count. What's that? He's a evil alien. Sure, but they showed humans. Monster, they showed humans count. breathing on the moon too. Oh, whatever. Keep going. Cal Goldfinch. Power Rangers need to invent spacesuit. Well, they kind of do ish. Like some of them. So, I mean, in space, arguably, is a spacesuit. Moth uh, Galaxy. Kyle Goldfinch, this annoyed me, big dog. Matt Kendall, clear. Very true, Steve. Plus, you were there with Squat and Finster when you found the Shoguns, which is likely on another planet. I'll accept that monsters don't need air to breathe, but yep. it, it's it's more than that. Um, Robabu, what about when Zed took over and got rid of Rita? Uh, Aki Jagu, true. Uh, and then it remained to Lost Galaxy, the Robabu. Because I was going to say, because there was definitely, I don't remember if it was in space or Lost Galaxy, where they're like fighting in space and like the helmet comes off and it's just like, oh boy, this is like, there definitely seems to be atmosphere in the space somehow, whether it's coming off of a ship or because of the morphing grid or the moon or whatever, it's not standard I, physics. But I even if it were, they would have survived in this episode. We'll agree to disagree. I don't agree I to really, disagree. I just disagree. That's fine. I'm <laughs> so excited to talk about this scene and we're behind. And even in Forever Red. True. So I know. I just didn't want to ignore yeah. chat. Okay. No, so, so he morphs. Sorry. But first we cut back here where um, – Vargo says, oh, I've only got enough to do super speed. Send me more and more effects. And Blaze and Roxy are like, well, I don't think we need to do that. And Skrulls are like, what do you mean? He'll be destroyed. And they're like, yeah. Yeah. And he's like, okay. good." Point. And I like this. Skrulls is just like, I'll go with whoever. I want you all to be destroyed. Yeah. So that's I fine. am a flip-flopper. Yes. And he's a survivor, not a flip-flopper. Yeah, a little bit of both. So then uh, Devin smartly pulls out his gun and fires it. It doesn't work, though, because he uses his super speed. So then Devin uses his super speed and um, – Instantly, we're watching the fa- the Flash fight Zoom because I was literally going to say this reminded me of that so much. The effects obviously aren't going to be as good. Nope. I don't expect them to be. The only minor, and I mean a minor nitpick, I have is why he does not use super speed for longer and more often. But this fight was so freaking. It was cool, great, man. I, and even like they're oh up on the ceiling. Gosh. They're they're like defying physics. It was a very flash kind of fight. Agreed that the effects aren't as good, but flash the whole show. All they do is speed effects. So what are you going to do? But the I also like. Thing- Oh, so I, they were smart enough that even though he's copying Devin's power, if they both had that kind of rainbow digital effect, it would be you couldn't follow it. So they gave it him the kind of smoky yeah. black. Yeah, good. 
Um, what I was going to say is the other thing that gives this even more gravity, we're talking episode one, Devin. Mm-hmm. Pre-Ranger Adventures, Devin. Yes. Just using his video game knowledge and his wits, still holding off Vargoyle yes. with these powers he it's, just discovered. It's oh, almost it's like the good. responsibility has hurt him and, and made him I, less... That's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. It no. makes us realize... Current Devin is bad in a, in a turn. Oh no! And oh old no! Devin is so good. many. There were so many comments on YouTube and other places where it's like, oh, but once you see the next two episodes, then we'll see what you think of Devin because Devin is awesome. But they're like, oh yeah, Devin. They're thinking Devin has a good episode. It's gonna turn Big Dog around. But you're like, this is proof how bad he is. Later. <laughs> kind of like it pains me because I'm like, you guys are just giving me hope of how great he was and how you just took him down this path of, of turdiness. Anyway, he's down this path of turdiness. Lupin Green, that one's for you. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so, meanwhile, Steel is almost at the thing. And I'll be honest, I actually thought he might not make it. Cause he's like, Because he's smoking and he's, and he's like reaching. And the, the way they did it, I'm like, oh, no. Is this going to be one of those things where he can't make it? But yeah. he did. And then it explodes and he falls to the ground. And he's like, I don't think I have a shot of it, but he's like shorting out and his eyes go dark. And it's like, whoa, that was that was some severe. Yeah. Wow. But it works because we cut to the Rangers getting their heads cleared right as they finish loading everything up for Blaze and Roxy. But it's yeah. too late because Blaze and Roxy have the stuff. Now comes the coolest part of the fight we were talking about. Where Devin's still fighting using super wait, speed. Wait, wait, wait. Go back one, one second because I agree with you. Yeah. So the thing that didn't make sense to me is how did their – cyber dimension of evil doers transportation work We've when they're not before. touching the items and not close enough to them, but they still teleport with them. We've talked by that about logic. Yeah. I was going to say by that logic, wouldn't the Rangers go with them too? Not necessarily. We've talked about this before about how the teleportation seems inconsistent and how come they couldn't just take things or whatever. My assumption is that grid battle force has some sort of defense or there's too much more effects or there's some, thing nate has so they have to be out of a certain sphere of influence i think once yeah. it's out of there then scrozzle can you know like a transporter chief in star trek just pick what he wants and i think he basically they transport and scrozzle like grabs him i think that's what it is it's about getting it outside of the base that's fine i still feel like as they're doing it they should be like huh and then hover over it reach for him and they're gone it's just it's another a, throwaway thing. Maybe it's a minor nitpick though. It's not inaccurate, but it didn't bother me that much. And chat, Matt Kendall Claire says, uh, just wanted to let all of you know that my birthday is tomorrow. And I thought steel wasn't going to make it either. Well, ha- happy future, birthday. happy birthday. Or if you're watching this again on YouTube, well, it'll be past then, but happy birthday. Whenever your birthday is forever. <laughs> happy birthday. Uh, and, uh, uh people wishing happy birthday and uh very nice yes so hopefully you have many happy returns tomorrow which is what tuesday so i don't know if you have school or work or whatever but hopefully you can get out of that and not do anything that isn't fun moving on in the episode though it is not birthday for devin or vargoyle but devin's like well i got this is a flash move where he's using his super speed. It is. It's so he chucks his gun up and it's like well the gun usually works this gun isn't working so i'm gonna throw it up and it hovers there because he's moving so fast. They go in, they have yeah. the super speed beat down. They're fighting, they're fighting. And he flips around in super speed, connects the other part to his gun that's still in midair because he's going so quickly. And he realizes, hey, if the gun isn't working because you're fighting someone that's super powered, what do you need? A super a powered gun. gun. And when he puts it together and fires it, it works. I End love of too how it was placed. He slid it back, didn't have a great grip on it and had to like, yeah, kind of do there's like the shot. a shoot from the sort hip of, kind of thing. Yeah, back and then. Oh, so cool. Yeah, very cool. So very, cool. very cool. One of the best Ranger fights we've seen this season, if not the best. This isn't a nitpick, just a preference. It's going to be a nitpick. I would have, I, it's not really a nitpick. I think it would have been cooler, to my previous points, if he blasted him and then he was affected by the wave and got his memories back. So he's still episode one Devin that took out. Because that was a very video game like move. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Um, and not clouded by eighteen to nineteen episodes of turdiness. Um, so, but on the downside, Steel is still messed up, and we don't know if he's gonna be okay. Nate's got to fix him, so he stays behind because they've launched a Gigatron. The other three core Rangers go out with their Zords to fight the Gigatron. This yep. is probably the worst Megazord fight of the entire season. Another reason yes. it's not an A. The three of them show up immediately become the Megazord. This Gigatron is a very generic, like, episode one, two, three. He's not part of, uh, you know, Vargoyle or anyone else. He shoots. They're like, whatever. Power up sword. Use that stasis thing. 
here's the cheetah gun slash Leo destroyed. Pardon. Yeah, terrible, boring. I understand that they just like here's the thing. They defeated the real enemy. Vargoyle is defeated. The drama now is Nate going to be able to fix Steel. That's what the episode ends on. But because it's Power Rangers, they're like, we can't have an episode without a giant robot fight. And you know what? You can. I would have rather had no giant robot fight than this one because it was, it was the def. It was like you know how they always make the jokes of, oh, they come out, then they combine, then they win. That's literally that all they did. It. And it was in like a minute. It was terrible. Again, I, why this is a lower rating than it should have been for the episode. I'm going to defend it uh. and say that they had pressure from higher up that they had to put it, and clearly it was an older monster, which is why only the three of them were there, right. and there was no interaction from the other two. Obviously, they tied it in with the steel thing. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. But at no other point in the episode was there Japanese footage. It was all American. I, I would have rather seen shots of the various rangers sitting there thinking about a happy memory of steel or hoping it's going to work out, or Ben and Betty being like, what can we do? Anything. It's, it's a commercial. I know. I know. It just – then make it longer. Then make it longer. It didn't bother me. It did not bother me well, the way it's bothering the, you, which is shocking. Yeah. Between, between this and the spanking is why it's like a B episode instead of a better one because it should have been. Because there's so I'm, there's so many good things. But – yeah. Vintage Jevin was just a whole different animal. I, and Steel. He was still, he was still, he was still a cheetah. <laughs> oh, Spe- yeah, I know where you're going. Here we go. Okay, oh, I know. I know where you're going. going. Let's keep going. Um, so they cut back. Steel, you gonna be okay, buddy? I am okay. And another hug. This is like the fifth episode to end with a hug. Here's the thing. Yeah. I was so nervous when they rebooted him, similar to what we saw with uh, Crush, Crunch, Smash. Smash, Smash in a previous episode, where it's like, oh no, he's gonna be rebooted and he's gonna be a hundred percent new memories. Yeah, like just started. Bl- I was like, as he was booting him up, I was like, oh no, no, no. I, no, I had that thought. Steal. I did have that thought, but I was like, you know what? They'll like scan Nate or someone else and give him his memories back. It'll be like a clip show where they give him his memories back. Like yeah, even if it happens, everybody yeah. gives a good aspect to him. Right. Has, bro, these are great ideas. Why are you not taking them? <laughs> uh, we're almost done. Let me check chat real quick. Um, Kyle Goldfinch, uh, Matt says, thank you. You're welcome. Kyle Goldfinch says, I'm going to work on Power Rangers one day. That's the dream. That's what makes Power Rangers so cool. Well, I do hope you get to work on it someday. I hope I get to work on it someday. I hope we all get to work on it someday. Yeah, I don't know if real. that's what makes it cool because even if I don't, I will still think it's cool. But Call me up. I'll go. <laughs> uh, Kyle Goldfinch, not all episodes need Zords. Agreed. Matt Kenneclair, the Giga Drone didn't have a name and GoBusters is supposed to be the Giga Drone version of Vargoyle's counterpoint, counterpart, which doesn't, I mean, I guess, but it didn't look like him at all. Uh, Kel Goldfinch, to be honest, Power Rangers is a very linear plotline. It becomes really frustrating and boring after a while. True, which is why when they break formula, it's so interesting. Akidragi, yep. the Flash Flight, was Japanese. Awesome. Okay. That, okay. Matt Kendall Claire, cool. also the sword that the Giga Drone uses is the same prop that the morphed Blaze uses. Oh, interesting. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, Real Babu, I want to work <laughs> on it someday, <laughs> too. I think in Real Babu, in your case, it means you want to work on it again someday. Yeah. All right, so back to the episode, and we would like to see that as well, to be clear. Yeah, uh, for real. So Steel is okay, and he's like, but I lost the plant. And Nate's like, hey, man, you saved the city. You saved Devin. You saved everyone. You can have a puppy. I, I should have believed in you. And we cut to a puppy. And as we talked about a couple episodes ago, for the first time since like episode one or two, Devin is frozen because of his cheetah DNA. I love <sighs> this part. Why? This was fine because he froze at first because the puppy was actually touching him. And then Steel went, oh, yeah, I forgot how you are about dogs. He pulled him away, and then Devin is walking with his arm like this. Yeah. I loved the Why? compromise. Because it, it was the, the fact that he freezes. Earlier, I, I hate it. I hate it. When a puppy licks his face and he's supposed to have like that as his weakness, that doesn't bother me. When he sees a billboard of a dog and then he loses a fight, that bothers that me. That was worse, it, but it's just such a dumb line. weakness. Again, being nervous, performing worse, but like freezing. He's a human. He has cheetah that's, DNA. Neither humans nor cheetahs are afraid of puppies. That's fine. But like they – they established. I can't it. believe gonna... the stuff that bothers you, and this doesn't bother I know. you. No, it. They didn't have to retcon it. They just made it a little bit better. They and could. I they didn't have to retcon it. it. They could have been. He's had this power for a while. He's lived with it. He's built up a bit of a tolerance. The same way the gorilla strength, he overheats, but he's learned ways to cope with it. She needs to eat. They've kind of worked around it. His has not changed at all. Same thing. His went like this. The dog licked his face and he froze. That is a hundred percent different. If a dog licked a cheetah's face, the cheetah would not froze freeze. It's, well, he's a, he's a cat. Who knows? 
I do I, like I, I do like that Steel says, "Oh, I forgot dogs bother you." That was a nice exactly. touch. Exactly. But I I just hate it so much. I'm shocked that this does not bother me. It bother. It should bother you. It, it it's one and of those you're things. You're a cat person, and I'm not. I I well, I like cats and dogs, but yeah, I do own cats. But no, but it bothers me more because it's not bothering you. Like like I'm more upset because like how does this not bother you? Whatever. I know. Uh. So, but then. I'm thinking like, wow, Steel's gonna have this dog, and like Devin's gonna get frozen all the time. That's weird. But this little girl sees the dog. And it's like, oh, how cute! And they end up giving the dog to her, which is fine because it's probably better that Steel doesn't have a dog and like you know whatever. Yeah. But what's weird is the mother's like, we went to the shelter and they had no puppies. What shelter has no puppies? Every shelter has dogs, and or unless it was just all older dogs and they didn't want to adopt yeah, an older dog. That, that's how I. Which is then it's like, oh, you're a bad person. You should adopt an older dog. But, <laughs> yeah, I did good forever. None of them were it, cute like, enough. We're only really. looking for puppies. The rest, eh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that then, but whatever, the dog's out of the picture, which it kind of needed to happen. So then Ben and Betty, yeah. poof, conveniently fall right near them, whatever. And, oh, it's finally out of energy. They look disgusting because they've been in a million places. And then Betty's like, hey, could we do it again? And they're all like, ah, ha, ha, ha. But it doesn't end there. It ends back in the evil force of evil dimension where we see even though vargoyle has gone, they have all the transporters and they're like, OK, we got more plans here. And uh, Ben, I'm um, sorry, Ben and Betty, uh, Blaze and Roxy are like, don't sweat it with these. We could still do the next phase of the plan, which I don't think they even say what it is. But again, I love the I continuity. I think it's the USB they put in Roxy's thing. Well, maybe that's the same plan or maybe those are two different plans. But the point is, once again, the good guys won. They beat Vargoyle, but they're still – bad guys are still making progress. You know, two steps forward, one step back is still moving yeah. forward. Then they cut to the USB and like, oh, there's something ominous going here. We don't know what, but don't forget. And that is yeah. Beast Morphers episode 107, which is rewriting history. Which one of those. Which means we're all caught up. Now, let me catch up with chat. Um Real blah, 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 blah. Kyle Goldfinch, I'm closest to New Zealand and I'm part of the director's editors of New Zealand. Okay, well, you guild. Well, you have a better chance than I do then. Uh, yeah. Sorry, big dog. I'm with Gazbot here. Thank you. I think with the dog thing. Uh, a cat. Yeah, dog thing. Matt can declare he is called the defender. It's true, although Very usually true. he's not defending. It's 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 interesting. I know. It's selective defense. This is a defense. weird episode, guys. Uh, Real Babu actually zoos use dogs to help acclimate baby cheetahs. I okay. That's an interesting fact. I don't understand how that works exactly, but do, do the cheetahs freeze? I, if that's true, I'll have to eat all my words. But I don't. I that doesn't. I don't think that's what happens. Uh, Kyle Goldfinch, Erg, so silly ending. Yeah, but again, the Ben and Betty thing didn't bother me as much as the dog. Uh, Kyle Goldfinch, since you guys are reviewing episodes 18 and 19, is uh, the U.S. doing double episodes? No. What happened is we fell behind. I missed an episode because I did Ranger Stop, and. One week I got prepared the wrong episode, so yeah. we had fallen behind. That two happens then you went to Ranger Stop. Right, so we missed one episode and then we fell behind. So now we are all caught up in the U.S. So the next week we'll be reviewing the current U.S. episode. I think there's four left this season, um, and we should be doing one a week from now on unless something happens yeah. or whatever. Uh, and then Matt can declared Evox does ask them if they had sabotaged the stasis pod. Oh, does he? Okay, well, so then I guess he knows about that. But again, that may or may not be connected to the other thing. I'm not sure. It seems to me if they could use those to maybe – maybe those are better teleporters than what they've been using. They could maybe grab just more effect directly from a tower or something. I, I guess we'll find out. Uh, Matt Kendall Clear says there's three left, I think. Yeah, okay, so a handful, not very many. Uh, and I hope it doesn't end on a big cliffhanger. I hope it wraps up this storyline and then we can start yeah. fresh next season. Kyle Goldfinch, that's weird because episode 18 was the brainwashing episode here in Australia. I believe that's so weird. We talked about the numbering is a little weird here yeah. because the Halloween episode aired on the week of Halloween or close to Halloween here, even though it was supposed to be like the last it's episode or second later to last. On, yeah. yeah, so that I think messed up the numbering a little bit. But yeah. um, that's about it. Is there any news or anything you want to talk about at the end of this episode, sir? Um, people you are, sir. are people are starting to get their lightning collection of uh, Draken, Mighty Morphin Red. Uh, Beast Morphin that. Blue and uh, what am I? Oh, and Dino Charge Gold. Yep. Um, so if you're looking for those, they should be out and about. Again, the... one per case. So if you see them, don't hesitate. I thought it was three. Three red, three, three Ravi, one gold, one Draken. So if you see gold Draken, one per case. Swoop yeah. them up. Yep. Yeah. Um, what else? Uh, the only Comic news I have, is... which is Ranger adjacent, is Subarai Productions, who creates Ultraman TV show and manga and anime, is teaming oh, yeah. with Marvel to make new comics. It's not exactly Power Rangers, but it's adjacent to Sentai, so I thought it's worth mentioning. And I'm a big Ultraman fan, so mm -hmm. I'm very interested to see how that's going to play out. 
Yeah. Uh, not related to Power Rangers at all. If you have Disney Plus, please go watch Mandalorian. It's great. Which is funny because there was an ad for that on the thing I was just. I saying. know that's <laughs> what made me think about it. I'm like, oh, she horned it in. <laughs> all right, uh, we are over, so I'm gonna call it. Uh, let me see. Uh, oh, I closed my chat window. Let me see if there's anything else in chat. Um, Kyle Goldfinch, Arg, cool, cool. Do you talk about Sentai news for 2020? No, we. I don't know what news for 2020. I guess if they you announced. Have news, feel free to share. Yeah, I'm guessing they announced the new Sentai team name, possibly, or whatever's going on. But uh, Ooh, no. Actually, Kyle Goldfinch. On the Facebook group, post it just so we can read any articles we have, and that way we could take a look since we're going to be ending the show. And I really want to know what it is. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Yeah, because we do have to end. We're over in time. Uh, so yeah. that'll be it for this one. Um, I will say thank you for watching live on Twitch. Thank you for watching later on YouTube. Thank you for commenting, posting, liking, sharing, all of those good things. You can check us out on the Facebook group. You can check it out on the Gazbot YouTube channel. I have my art for sale on Gazbot Etsy. But for now, we are done. We will see you next week. I have been Gazbot. I have been and continue to be the big dog. And while he is frozen, it is still to the power. To the power. To the power. You know what? I realized we didn't do an ending for the other episode. I know. You rushed me. Yeah. Well, we'll reuse this one. It'll be the same. If you're watching this one and you notice the ending is the same as the last one, you're smart. (laughs) Hey! Hey, hey, hey. End credits. Uh